Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and I'm live. I'm at the TLA Theater of Living Arts in Philadelphia on South Street and hopefully we've got good internet to, to last us, but this is a Q&A on live concert photography and all the questions that go into it that I saw on Facebook. People were asking for me to do a whole thing, you know, with like following me around from where you get your tickets and walk in and the, and the pit and all this stuff. So I figured I would go on Spreecast and do a walk around of the venue and tell everybody what we're doing. First things first, thank you. Happy holidays. Thanks for joining. If you could use these, um, as always, use the blue box, which is right there on the screen, to send in your questions and comments. Being that I'm here myself and I don't have a producer on currently, I'm going to have to try to go through those questions and see them as I do. So feel free to use those questions. It looks flumpy. I need to do my hair. I know, I've been trying to do my hair. I just I don't know what's going on with it. So use the Submit Questions button, Comment Questions. It's a blue box right under the video. I need to do this part right here. And those questions will pop up, and I will try to do my best to answer them. Uh, so if you could Facebook out that we're live, use the link to get people back to here. Um, if you could tweet out, you can go on Google+, Plus. all of those things, we could get more people watching live, which is always more fun. Uh, no, I actually slept a ton last night. I don't need that much rest. Oh, and if you see me getting the camera closer to me, it's because I can't really see the screen too well. Um, here's a question. And then that goes up to here. And the question is, what are you using for a camera to stream right now? It's my MacBook Pro. I'm using that currently to stream everything. Um, so how's the microphone and everything sound? <coughs> Good, 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 good. Mic sounds fine. Good. It's the built-in one. Welcome to the live. I'm typing a thing up for you guys. Q&A about concert photography. Please use comment question button. I'm doing my own comment question button thing here. And I can drag that right onto here if I do this properly. And don't forget, you guys can come on the screen with me as well. Um, if I uh, see that you guys have video, I could totally bring you on here. And that doesn't seem to want to work properly. Oh, well. Um, let's see. Why don't I start off with some quick questions, throw them in there, and I'll go through here and I'll try to answer some questions. You can type them in right here. I wish I had a producer. I wish I had a producer. All right, here's a question. Which focal length would be good for concert photography? Is a 90 millimeter 1.8? I've never heard of a 91.8. Maybe do you mean a 51.8? Uh, a 35.18 is good. A 51.8 is good. But other than that, uh, I like to use the zoom lenses personally. They give me more uh, ability to change and shoot and all of that. I have not tried a Hasselblad. I see that question in there. Here's another question we're getting to. This is why I have a producer, so I can just talk all the time. Is it true that daylight white balance produces less noise and it is the biggest, has the biggest dynamic range? I've never heard that. I don't really know. I don't see why it would. I mean, if you shoot raw, you can change all that stuff anyway. I don't, I don't, I don't see how that would affect anything personally. Um, yeah, I don't get that. Anybody have any video questions? Anybody want to come on video? Ah, this is a good question from John. Let me get this up. And you know what? I'll go through my bag too and show you guys what's going on. So here's the question. What's the etiquette on using flash during gigs? And do you, would you, do rear curtain sync with flash high speed ISO to get the shot? So I'm shooting Modest Yahoo tonight. Um, I'm in their dressing room right now. And we know from the past couple nights that there was some issue with some flash photography. Do you use flash photography at a concert? 
Um, no. Most of the time, no. If you know the band and you're respectful and you tell them what you're trying to accomplish with the flash, uh, flash photography, then maybe you can do it. But for general flash photography at concerts, absolutely not. If you're shooting a metal band, if you're shooting bands like that and you want to try some of that slow speed sync or rear curtain sync, by all means, go for it. But when you're shooting, you know, bigger acts, you know, flash can get really annoying on stage and it just blinds the artist and, and it makes it worse for everybody else if you're just blinding the artist. So try not to do that. Well, if you're not hearing anything, JD, and I don't know why I'm saying it because he's not hearing it, it's probably just them. We still sound good on the mic? We still we still look good? Sound good? Yes, good. Um, anybody have any video qu questions? Like if you get on screen, get on camera, I'll bring you up. Here we go. We've got what lenses? What lenses are you using? Why don't I put this down over here? There we go. And I'll get my bag over here. And I'll just go through what lenses we've got. Let's see. I have the D3S here, 14 to 24. That's one. I've got the 24 to 72.8. That's a good one. I've got 70 to 200 2.8. That's a good one. What's going on? I'm live. I'm talking to everybody today. Well, how's everyone you can, doing? You can say hello. Hello. Um, so I've got that. And I also brought the 10.5, sorry, 16 millimeter fisheye as well. I do have a flash, um, which I'm not going to use. And I also have the D7000 to record some video live during the show. So I'm going to be using that to record. Oh, I also have my contour helmet cam, which I'm going to put on top of the camera so I can do the first person shooter project, which is going to be good. Um, I'm not sure why Eddie is well, how dis what he's disappointed in. I don't know. I can't really tell. I don't know, um, Jack, I don't know why you're confused here. Let's see. What's this question say? I'm confused. Are you shooting tonight? What did you bring and what are you shooting? Yes. <laughs> I just told you what I brought and I'm shooting Matis Yahoo tonight. Why don't we take a walk around the venue? Uh, yeah, this is my, my leather, my leather jacket. Um, do you guys want to see me walk around the venue? How many photos are you going to shoot? How many songs? Yeah. Here's, here's some etiquette for shooting. When you do shows, you usually get three songs. Um, why don't I start walking around? I'll unplug here, and I'll just talk as we move around. Let me put my bag back over. I can show you the... Here's the room. This is uh, the room. Nobody's in here currently. Um, so let's go for a walk. Um, when you're shooting a concert, you get three songs generally, no flash, and that's something that you want to stick to. Uh, be, in, unless you get permission, I'm going downstairs now, hold on, I'm going to walk, unless you get permission from the bands to let you shoot more, which is a good thing, because that's when you get in with the bands, you can shoot as much as you want. So that's one stairs. Oh, here's the bathroom where I met Vanessa Carlton many years ago. What do you think of the rights grab? Ah, rights grabs forms. I don't sign them. Um, I was faced with one from some big known artists and I started crossing lines out. Uh, basically that said they could do whatever they want with the pictures. Like I owe them the photos if they allow me to shoot. And that's definitely not going to happen. So I don't, I don't sign those. I just cross lines out and usually it goes well. So this is um, the stage. Chris, you want to say hi to my readers? Yo, readers. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? So, so now we're on stage, and uh, here's the venue. Got all these pedals down here. Chris, I say, what's up back? <laughs> so we've got all these lights here. 
And then we got and then we got the pit. We'll go into the pit and I'll show you how small the pit is before I give you some uh, more information on that. See you in a minute, guys. Pit. Is it going to be the, where they push it against the stage? Yeah, we'll go right up. Like, Are you really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me tell everybody out here in the world watching that they're going to do that to me. Really, they're pushing it straight up against the yeah. stage tonight? Yeah. If I don't, I might have it removed altogether. And whatever you do, whatever you do is whatever you do. Right. It's my job to deal with it. Right. right? All right. So, I was just throwing a monkey wrench. This is the pit. It's as wide as my shoulders, pretty much. And they just told me that they're not going to have a pit. Um, so they're probably going to remove the barricade, which is, here's the barricade. And you know what? It is what it is. If they make, uh, if they move the pit, hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Say hello to everybody out there watching. What up? Everyone out there watching. Exactly. Oh, he's got some big-ass pizza. Let's show him the big pizza. De, De, De Lorenzo's. That's one piece of pizza. There it is. Voila. That, that's a big piece of pizza. So, so they're taking away the pit. And being that there's not going to be a pit, I'm probably going to shoot from side stage or, or maybe even clear my own spot in front of the stage. Um, I'm not really sure yet. But that's what you deal with when you're shooting shows. You never know what's going to happen. So you may not have a place to shoot if they decide to move the pit. And this, this is all the area that there was between the, the, the barricade and the stage. So let's take another walk. There's another place we could shoot, which I probably won't. Oh, by the way, here's the um, mirrored, dreidel, mirrored dreidel ball. Where is it? Where is it? Wait. I can't really tell. There it is. So that's that. Um, here's the look from all the way back here. So you can see the stage. Yeah, bring my own pit, exactly. Um, so what else do you guys want to hear about? This is it. Well, why don't we walk out front? I'll walk out front just to show you the front. So basically, you guys want to know where you want to Everything. Why don't we? We'll do the whole walk in. We'll go out onto the street here. Hopefully, I got. Oh, internet. I'll show you the barricade and everything. So, we're outside. See the ticket counter where it says be right back and where it says sold out. They're not here? Who? What? Ticket the people? people? I think the ticket people will be back in a couple of minutes. I don't know. I'm sure out doing dinner or lunch. I don't know. I don't know how much you guys saw, but I guess I lost connection outside. Um, what did it? What What did you guys hear? How far did you hear? Did you see me outside? Door. You got me to the door, and then I lost it. All right. Anyway, I went to where I picked up everything, and um, yeah, that's where I picked up everything. Why are you out here tonight? You setting up uh well here, here's some cool stuff. Watch a watch a professional at work. <laughs> Sound checks at four. Uh I think so, yeah. I'll leave you be. <laughs> it's very exciting. You remember that. No, he's, a, he's an amazing sound tech, not the lighting tech. Um, lighting tech is on the other side. Uh, so here are the lights. Well, why don't we walk around and show you the lights that they have here. So what do they have? 
These are great. These are amazing lights. These are the ones they spin, they change colors. They Remember how I got that really awesome picture of Modest last year? Does everybody remember the one with the yellow in the background and the, and the light? You guys remember the tour poster that Modest had for the summer? Yeah? It's because of this light right here. The one right up here. That's the light that got me that photo. So basically what I, where I was, I was all the way over here on the stage. I was over here shooting. And that light is back over there. On the other side, wait, it is right up there, right here, and it was shining down on his head. Hello to your girlfriend. She loves you. Oh, thank you. Um, is this the same stage you shot last year? Yeah, I shot about a year ago. It's the same stage. That's the light that gave me that awesome spray around Modest's head, which was awesome. So that was really good. Um, also here, up here, you've got all the cans. I guess you can't see because it's too dark and the lights are off. But they've got cans up here. And then you've got more of the, uh, what do you call those lights again? 700 ma macro? Macro, like macro text. These are awesome lights. Here's a, here's a close up of a 700 macro tech. I like those things. They give you really awesome light. Better than just venues that just have cans. Cans aren't great. Oh, and then there's even bright lights up front. These are really good for lighting up the artist, giving you a nice white, like give you a nice white on the artist. Cause look, see, nice light. And then my back is turned. Nice light. See, nice light on my face, and then it spreads out. You got the nice wash in the background with the um, with the cans up top. They start to, they look good. Uh, da da. Photography etiquette. I will get to etiquette shortly. I'll go back upstairs after we do this walk around. So yeah, if there's no pit, I kind of don't have a, a place to shoot, which will be interesting. Uh, all right, I'll just turn. I don't want too much light. Yeah, I won't have much of a place to shoot, which is interesting, but I'll figure it out. It's, we'll see. I'll go into the crowd and whatnot. Why not use prime lenses? Um, you can. It depends how much time do you have to shoot. Generally, when I'm shooting a concert, I don't have a lot of time. If you get three songs, you don't have a lot of time to switch lenses. So that's why I don't like using prime lenses as much, because you can't make the changes quick enough. Jump on someone's back, yep. Let's see if there's some other questions are, are here. This is a good question from Steven. It says, how do, you, how do you go about getting photography passes to shoot? Remember what I've always said. Um, you call, you ask um, the promoters, you, ask the, you call the, the managers for the bands, you talk to the bands directly on Facebook. You just go in with an affiliation. You say, hey, look, I'm looking to photograph the band. Um, this is what I can do for you. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for access. I'll give you these photos and things like that. Um, not sure why that bounced off the screen. I didn't take it down. Um, but, you know, so you just ask for the passes. If you don't have an affiliation with a newspaper, you don't have an affiliation with a magazine, get an affiliation with a blog and get them to basically get you permission or if you if they say you can use their name that you're shooting for them then you can go ahead and find out who to call the tour ma not the tour managers but you can call management you can call the venue they'll hook you up with the promoter the promoter will end up telling you who you need to call for the venue and then one thing leads to another and you can get a pass that way you can also for smaller bands reach out to the bands directly and then they can then in turn set you up with whatever you need so it's easier with smaller artists to go ahead and get um, it's easier with smaller artists to get access. So, well, we got some band members coming. Hey, say hello to my readers. Hi. Hi. How was your cheesesteak? Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Yum. You guys smell like Jim's too. Mm. You, you, you smell you. no Jim's. You smell like Jim's cheesesteak. You smell like Jim's. I know. Thank you. Awesome. So. Um. I can't read that. I don't know what her name is. It says like Jahami Mehedi. Um, so yeah, I try to go to the band or the PR, dealing with the promoter. Yeah, you really don't want to deal with the promoters. 
they're not going to help you out. But if you deal directly with the bands themselves, or you deal directly with um, you know, the live nations of the world, which isn't the easiest thing to do, if you have an affiliation and you have work to prove yourself that you do what you do, you should be able to get in. If you don't have a lot of work yet, then go shoot some local small shows. The bands are always more than happy to let you in the shoot because they just want photos for them. Managers are where the money, yeah, well, managers make all the decisions. Uh, well, I like to say that the bands make all the decisions, but sometimes management uh, supersedes that. How many photos you get in three? Well, photos could vary. I could take eight photos in three songs because there's not much going on, or I could take a hundred in three songs. There's no set number. But remember, I don't always motor drive through the music, uh, through the songs and things like that. So, you know, just keep, keep, uh, just shoot based off of what you see. Which strap? Um, which strap? I'm using the Black Rapid RS Sport tonight. Uh, I use that for the shows, and I'll put my contour camera on top of the camera uh, to get the video. So, yeah, we're getting close to sound check, and well, I'm going to shoot sound check. I don't think I can. Uh, maybe I'll spreecast it. I don't know. Maybe I'll just turn it on, leave it on, and spreecast. I don't know if they'll like that. I don't know. Do you have special access to particular performance? I do. Well, for this one, I have all access to do whatever I want. Um, I can shoot from wherever I want. I can do whatever I want. And But be respectful. Within reason. Within reason. Yeah, here. Go ahead. You want to? <laughs> Always within reason. No flash photography. Wait. Flash photography tonight? <laughs> no, I already received that text message. Huh? Gotcha. Yeah, definitely no flash. Um, I'm not using flash. Uh, you know that's me. I don't use that. Is there a time where I get nervous before a shoot? Um, yeah, I, I guess sometimes when you're shooting a really, really big act and there's a lot of people in the pit and you've got only three songs to get it right, you feel nervous. But then when you start shooting, you just shoot. You do your thing. You don't worry about it. And you should be fine. Uh, that's for me. I don't really get too nervous. What was my big first big shoot? I did a lot of big shoots. I mean, I did Aerosmith when I first started. I did Bon Jovi. A lot of big shows that came around I shot. Big band, big I don't know. When you get in with like touring with Perry Farrell, it wasn't that much. I mean, I guess there's some pressure, but you just realize that you're there to do a job and you shoot a band the same way as if they were the biggest act in the world, the Foo Fighters, or, or if they weren't. You just keep shooting everything just like you would. You do a good job. What do you do to get venue? Well, if a venue doesn't have good lighting, there's not much you can do. Um, bad lighting is bad lighting. There's uh, no way around it unless you pop flashes, and at that point, I just don't even shoot in a bad venue. We, I've encountered that on tour, too, where you get to a venue where it's not very good, and, and you just... Um, yeah, you just keep going from there. Let's see. What do you charge for the shoot? Well, charging all depends on a lot of things. Um, it varies. It varies on what you're doing, who you're doing it for. Um, so that all changes around. Hold on, we're going to take a walk back upstairs because they're starting to test this sound and everything. So I'm just going to go up into the dressing room here, back upstairs. <laughs> fall down the stairs. Actually, fall up the stairs. Don't want to fall up the stairs. All right, now we're back to where we started. Back in the good old dressing room, where it's almost silent, but it's not too silent. Um, how are we doing? Is this guys? Is this helping you out? Um, give me a yes. Give me a no. Maybe. No, I probably won't do some iPhone pictures tonight on Twitter. Um, I'm here to shoot my stuff using the D3S, putting that contour camera on the camera, um, and I'm just going to shoot away. So let me try to go through some of these questions to see what you guys have. I'll stay on for another 15 minutes, I guess, um, and then I'm going to go shoot sound check. Maybe I'll do some tutorials down there with the camera, and I'll talk about different lighting and how to meter for that stuff. Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I've never shot them, but uh, a big show like that should have a ton of lights, and you shouldn't have problems at all. 
shooting them because they've been around forever. Good question here. This is a good question. Do you take the camera bag to the pit? I do. I take my camera bag in the pit. Um, if there is a pit, if I've got a good amount of room, I'll put it down on the ground. Usually there's a, uh, like a curtain on the stage. Like a, uh, what do they call that? The ah, skirt. The skirt's on the stage underneath. Like I'll, I'll lift that up and I'll push my bag underneath and I'll open it, have my lenses ready to go, and then I'll shoot from there. Um, I do like taking my bag into the pit because I like to switch lenses as I'm going on. And a good tip when you're switching lenses in the pit, don't rush. Don't rush through switching lenses because if you do, you may put it on wrong. You may damage the camera, so you don't want to do that. Um, yeah, so be careful with that. Here's another question. I'm just trying to go through these questions over here. Uh, do you have a normal routine you go through before shooting shows? Well, yeah, I do. I check, make sure I'm shooting raw and make sure that the camera's always, I mean, it's always set to raw, but you never know. It's a computer. It's a camera. It could change. So I leave it on raw all the time. I make sure it's set to raw when I'm shooting. Um, make sure my ISO is where I want it. Make sure my shutter speed's where I want it. Make sure my cards are reformatted. Uh, I have two cards in the camera because I do dual redundancy. So I have two 16 gig cards in the camera. Basically, when I take a picture, it saves it to the card one, and it saves it to card two. So I have two raw files, same picture, but just back up just in case one goes bad, the other is still there. So that's good to have. Um, what else is there? Uh, so I get that. Make sure my batteries are charged, that I have enough battery power. So we've done reformatting. Make sure my lens caps are ready, are off, ready to go. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Make sure I've got my permission to shoot. Um, yeah, here, this is even, this is good too. Do you have a normal routine before shooting shows? Uh, this is good to talk about too. Before the show, I talk to the tour, well, try to talk to the tour manager, but I always talk to um, the security. I let security know, hey, I'm shooting three songs tonight, or hey, I have clearance to shoot more than three songs, so if you see me in here after everybody else is kicked out, know that I have approval, here's my pass, here's who told me it's okay. Usually they'll be okay with that, or they'll check with somebody and you'll get approved, um, or that you are approved to be there, and you can stay there, um, and they won't give you any trouble. So if you touch base with them before the show, it's better than if you try yelling while the show's going on, and they're like, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, you're out of the pit type of thing. So you always want to make sure you touch base with the security beforehand because they're your ticket to staying where you're at, and they'll protect you in the pit, especially at some of the big shows where there's a lot of uh, stage di not stage diving, but crowd surfing, people will come over the barricade and they'll move you out of the way gently to let you know that people are coming. They'll watch you. They'll take care of you. Um, I guess Adam's here. Let me uh, drag Adam up here on the screen. Adam! I gotta wait for that to load. I know it could take a couple seconds. Um, yeah. So while that's loading, or waiting for that to load, I'll just have him up here on the screen. Do I need to approve him or anything? Oh, I think I Let's see. Make a co-producer. I'm making Adam a co-producer. I think we're... Oh. oh, I don't know where he went. He just disappeared. Um, let me get some other questions while we're waiting. We've got a request to join on camera. Uh, hey, what's up? You can if you want. I mean, it's illegal in Philly, but you can. Nobody's going to say anything. Yeah, nobody's going to say anything back here. Cigarettes, cigarettes. All right, we've got a guy. I'm on a, I'm on a live spree cast. It's really cool. <coughs> what do you mean? So we got somebody waiting to come on camera here. Let's see if we can get them on. Tom Roberts. Let's see if he comes on here and we can do Tom, what's going on, buddy? Not too bad. How are you? Where are you calling from? Uh, UK. Where at in the UK? Um, I'm in Hampshire, near Stonehenge. Oh, Stonehenge, Hampshire. I, I hail from East West um, Northshire. It's it's near the Hobbit's home. What's uh What's, what's your up? question? Well, I've been um I've been doing a lot of uh, concert photography, but um, the venues that I'm getting. 
are not uh, the the lighting's not great in the sense of there there's no well it, it's very blue very um very colorful lighting at the front of the stage so i'm not getting great skin tones or anything like that is there any advice on that I tr i've tried playing around with white balance but yeah I can't really get what I want. it's called black and white um, well, yeah, yeah. You know, why not? Well, you know, if the, if there's bad color, if it's just one color wash, it's all blue, it's all red, it's all green, you will just want to go to black and white. It's going to make for a, just a, a much better image because you can cut through all the crap and um, just get much better pictures with that. Bad venues with bad lighting, you just have to fight your way through it to try to do something different. And then that brings up the flash photography question when you're shooting shows. Um, it depends on the artist. I would check with an artist if you're going to want to shoot with flash. I would check with them before you do it to make sure it's okay because you don't want anybody kicking you or ripping your flash off your camera during the show because that, that wouldn't be too good. <laughs> um, does that help at all? Yeah, I, th I, th I think so. I, I want to get a, um, I've, I shoot D7000, so I want to get the um, SB900. And one of the bands that I, I shoot fairly regularly are pretty cool so I can... I'm trying to thinking of putting the off camera flash maybe on the drum kit or something like that just try and get something different. See, there you go. That's good thinking. If you were to put the flash um sometimes you can put it in the smaller venues if you could put it off to the side like a 45 degree angle, you can wirelessly trigger it through the CLS system with your D7000. Um you could get some cool dimensions putting the flash off to the side. Get permission to do that. I've done that and that works really well when you put a flash up somewhere else and it's not just straight flash in the face because bands aren't going to like that. Um, you don't just want to constantly pop flashes in their face. Does flash bother you on stage? No. Because you're never looking at people, right? Yeah, and a lot of the shows are strobes and whatnot, especially for strobes. Right, right. right. Yeah, I'm just the bass player. <laughs> you're just the bass player, thank you. <laughs> Adam, you're an artist. Uh, hey, um, Tom, um, I'm going to kick you out, but do you have any other questions? No, nope. not for me. That's great. Oh, well, thanks. Cheers, Keep guys. watching. Merry Thank you. Happy holidays. Adam. Hey. Hey, so you're, you're, a formerly, you're a former touring artist. Why don't you tell us the, the Buddha Velvets? Yeah. Right? And what was yeah. the other one? Second Dan. Second Hand what? Second Dan. Second Dan, right. You broke up. I don't know if it's my connection or what. Maybe if I plug my computer back in so back in the 90s when you were touring um what did you encounter with photographers out there did you encounter a lot of flash because of uh the lighting conditions back then um you know i think oftentimes when you're on stage the stage lights are so intense that if somebody were firing a flash at you you probably wouldn't really even notice it um when you're i mean particularly when you're playing a proper venue you know that you're up on stage you're probably five or so feet above the crowd even if you've got somebody in the pit that's firing a flash i mean unless they're like going full power with like an sb 900 or something um you know you're probably not going to really be too bothered um but the thing is is that if somebody like yourself was on stage let's say trying to capture the show and popping flashes it could be distracting because you don't really want to notice the photographer so much when you're trying to do a show no, that's that's definitely true, and yeah, and, and you notice when you're on stage, the lights are so bright that you sometimes don't see the flash. But I guess it depends on the venue, and if it's if the if the lights aren't too powerful, and somebody's just pop strobe after strobe in your face, it may not work too well. I mean, we don't like full power in the face ever, right? Right. Adam, you there? Jared, your sound's a little choppy, man. Somebody first. Uh oh, I think Adam froze. Right. All right, back in there. Either he froze or I froze. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I removed Adam. Let me throw him back in here. This is what happens when you don't have a dedicated connection, and there's probably more people. Sorry, Adam. Right. No problem. I mean, I'm look, not... the thing is, both you and I have shot shows. We've both been on stage. We've both been in the pit. You know, there's just kind of this unwritten etiquette that when you're shooting a band, you have to be respectful. And oftentimes it means 
having to limit the kind of photographs that you're going to get because the band is there to put on a show. They're not there to be, you know, the subject of your band photography most of the time. You know, unless you're being hired for the band to actually capture them for a specific purpose, you kind of don't really want to get in their way. Right. And I apologize if I walked all over you talking, by the way, because I didn't, you, it looked like you froze to me, so I didn't hear it going. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting I, I, crappy got, number. I got busted by the uh, guitar player from OK Go because they, the, uh, the singer like went out into the crowd and the whole band walked to the front of the stage. So I came around from behind the drum riser to photograph it and I got so caught up in that that when they started coming back, I didn't realize that I was kind of on stage. <laughs> and the guy like gave me the old, hey, you. And I was like, oops, OK, <laughs> too, too and close. That, and that, there's also something about that, too. Like when I'm shooting bands that I know a lot, like I've shot them a lot, I can go on stage, but then get out of the way before because I know what they're going to do when they're going to do it. Um, so you kind of get that feeling when, when it's time to move out of the way um, and time to actually stay off stage. So, yeah. Um, are there any que Adam, can you see any questions and comments as a producer off to the side that you think we should answer? And I'll just keep yapping here. Um, I haven't had really a chance to go through them because it's hard to do both of these at the same time. Indeed, indeed. Um, um, but yeah, I'll just tell you, I'm getting ready for sound check, and what I'm going to look to do in sound check, uh, I'm going to look for lights, see what they're going to do with them. I know they're going to be testing them out. I may make some videos down there just for you guys about metering at a concert and, and how to do that properly when the lights are up there and, sorry, when the lights are up there and the cans are shining in your face and they're too bright and, and what could happen with your meter. Go ahead, Ad. So, uh, uh, uh one of the uh, one of the folks online, Ken, has just asked a really good question. Why do you only get three songs to shoot well, as yeah. a? And that's that's and you're going to answer that question. Well, yeah, but you could next. You can just approve it and then drag it on screen like that next time. Oh, huh. do you know? Gotcha. Do you know the answer? But the three songs. I think it's because like the photographer, group of photographers, the barricade or whatever. Yeah. That's one school of thought. Um, and I think it's like, you know, the first... What was the answer? Uh, yeah, so one of the band members, one of the band members is telling me, from his thoughts, that um, it could get distracting with the guys in the pit. Now, that is one thing, and I've asked the managers about this before, and they said somewhere in the 80s, an artist got really sweaty and then started limiting people because they didn't want to look bad after three songs. Oh, uh, that, that's... So that's one thing, yeah. but yeah, photographers in the pit can be distracting, not only to the artist, but they can be distracting to the, to the people that are paying to see the show. Because, exactly. you know, if you've got a big bushy-haired guy with an afro staying in, standing in front of you in the pit the whole night, you're not going to really have too much fun watching. So you have to be courteous in the pit if you're going to be in there and stay down low. So that's one of the things with the three songs. It's It's... You know, most people get three songs to shoot. Some bands are two. Avril Lavigne only gave us two songs. I only got to look at her leather-clad, tight, liquid leather pants for two songs. Mm. Two. Well, you That's can it. Shot the You're Canadian. Yeah. You yeah. like Avril. She used to be a country singer. She, yeah, well, as a kid, she was a country singer. Yeah. Have you ever encountered Avril? Mm -hmm. No? I'd like to encounter Avril. <laughs> um, I like Avril. Um... Yeah, so really that's it. Three songs, it came down to, one, it could be a distraction. Two, you don't want to block the people behind you. Three, somewhere along the line, an artist was like, I'm too sweaty after a couple songs and I don't want pictures of me, which I find to be uh, not very rock and roll because, um, yeah, because that's the whole point. You're supposed to look sweaty and all that. Make sense, Ed? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I, I think that, that it's just also for the security guys... You know, they got a lot of stuff to kind of manage and to have to also manage the guys in the pit. There's just there's a lot of moving parts of the show. And a lot of times the photographers in the pit, some of them are just not respectful or they're just, you know, they're they're not really, you know, seasoned at it. Um, it used to be kind of a very limited thing, as you know, that there was only a handful of people in there. It was kind of the same people from news agencies. Now with the whole blogosphere, there's a lot of people that are getting into that pit and it, it sometimes can get out of control. I mean, you know, you've been in there sometimes where there's 20 people. And you're like, what the heck is going on down here? Yeah, when you get too many people in there, it's um, 
it's not good. It's not good to have too many people in there, and it's just annoying. So that's why I get try to get approval to shoot more than three songs. Because if I can shoot more than three songs, then I'll go into the pit maybe for one song, and then as soon as everybody goes bye-bye, then I just float around, and it gives me more time to think. Because you don't want to rush through it. Even if you have three songs, if you rush, that's a chance you're going to make mistakes. Um, so just stay calm. Uh, Derek. Derek, what's going on? Hey, I just wanted to touch upon the uh, the question. Not too much. How you doing, bud? Out here in Denver, it's great. Nice beard, by the I way. I just wanted to touch upon the question. She asked, how, does, how do you get started at a concert? Thank you. Uh, there's a venue here in Denver called Hudson Gardens. Um, I actually went directly through the concert promoter manager of that venue, and I've All right, he froze. Yep. Yeah, he froze. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was just me. We'll try to get Derek back on here. I don't know what he was saying. Um, think, sorry about yeah, that. I think uh, and one what thing we could at? touch I think people are wondering, like, how do you go about trying to get access to Photograph? Have we talked about that? I did talk that? about that. Yeah, okay. I did. Basically, I'll tell you what I did, Adam. I took the laptop and I walked all around the venue and showed everybody the lights and, and where I'll be shooting and all that good stuff. See you, Stu. See you, buddy. Oh. See it sound check. Twenty minutes. Big sound check today. So is there a giant I'm put goal a flash of... right on your base cab, all right? Yeah. Right in your face. Every time you turn to the base cab, boom. Flash. I always play better with this one. Do you? So that's why you play well when I'm on tour? <laughs> um yeah. Okay. So Adam, any other questions or anybody come back on camera? Um nope. No, I don't see any. I don't see any other questions up there, or down there. Well, there's a lot of questions down there. I haven't approved yet. Okay, I don't know why I'm not seeing the question thing. Uh, I made you a producer. I know. I'm seeing comments. I'm not seeing questions. Scroll down. On the page itself. Oh, here we go. No. Yeah. Anyway. Take a look through there. I'll see if we get. So Andrew Todd. Let's see. We've got a guy coming up for video. Let's uh. See what he looks like, and he's gone. No longer there. Um, so I've got another, what, 17, 18 minutes until sound check. Uh, let's, right. Let me read some of these questions. Do you use settings or even have them? Oh, noise reduction. I don't, I don't use noise reduction. I don't set noise reduction. Um, I, I guess it's partly in the D3. Even, you know, not just because I have a D3S, but when I shoot... Even with a D3100 or a D7000, I don't want noise reduction. It just flattened the the image gets all smooth and it doesn't look as there's no there's no like tone there's no like sharpness to it anymore. Um, let's see if Donald can get on camera here and see if we can answer his question. Let's see. Here we go, Donald. Hey Jared, it's Donald. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. What's going on? I'm I'm good. Um, I just had a quick question. Have you ever shot black and white photography at a concert? In terms of film or in general? In general. All right. I'll I'll answer that. Um, I shoot everything in color, but because I'm shooting raw, you know, because you're shooting raw, you can then convert it later. Does that make sense? Hello? Yeah, did you did you hear what I said? Did you repeat? Uh, basically, when you're shooting a show, I shoot everything in color. And being that I'm shooting raw, we don't have to worry about shooting in black and white because we can just convert it later and um, and we can move from there. So, so that's why I shoot everything in color because you can convert later. Okay. The people that are shooting JPEGs, if they shoot it in black and white, they don't have the color data and they're not going to get Thank you. the photos. Uh, they're never going to have that color data. So if you're shooting raw, you can you can shoot with a preview on the back of the camera for black and white, but know that all your color data is still going to be there. Cool? 
There's a um, good question over here. Uh, somebody was wondering, like, what do you carry into the pit? Multiple cameras, yada yada. What do you? What kind of a bag do you take? I know we've talked about this before, but it's a really, it's a really good question, and and I think that um, it's good to kind of have an idea about that. Yeah, I, I go in the pit and I take the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, and the 14 to 24. There's also a fish eye in my pocket because that just, or in my bag. I have usually either a retrospective 30 from Think Tank, or if I'm on tour and I've been flying, I won't have my retro because it's, I try to pack light, and I just use my um, Urban Disguise 35 to shoot out of. Um, I like shooting out of a bag personally. I've thought about doing the the harnesses and the and the weight, the hip belt, but I just I don't know if I want to have that stuff around my hip. You know, I don't know if I want to have lenses hanging in pouches, and if I miss, I drop it on the floor. Um, I just find the spot in the pit, put my bag down where it's out of the way. It's not near the barricade where somebody could reach over and grab it, or it's not near the barricade where somebody can jump over and land on it. Right. I also um, think that just one, um, just one camera for me because I just have one D3S. If I had more than one D3S, I would probably have on a double strap or something, or lay the second camera down and grab it when I need it. Yeah, I mean the pit. It depends on the pit. You know, obviously, if there's a lot of people down there and it's dark, you don't want to like set your gear down and then turn away from it because you never know what could happen to it. Um, but um, I know that I've heard some photographers will keep the lens caps off of whatever lenses that they're not using so that if they do if suddenly something changes in the concert and they're like they want to do a quick lens change you know they'll just uh, be able to facilitate that but typically I think one body and at least two lenses is, is probably all you need to, to shoot yeah, and especially if, if you're only shooting three songs you don't have a lot of time to make change so here's what I would do in the pit for three songs I would focus in on a couple things I want to make sure I get a wide shot that tries to get the whole band in the sh in the frame that's one thing I would like to do I would like to do a wide vertical so I'd like to do a wide vertical um, that gives me everything from foot you know the feet all the way to the head then I'd come in tighter then I'd switch to a tighter lens I do a tight head shot I do a tighter um, detail shots of the guitars um, try to get the artists with like the guitar out of focus in the foreground but their face in focus so these are the things that are running through my head and my mind when I'm shooting a concert. I know that I want to run, I want to run through different angles. Um, so I make sure I, I try to get that as I'm shooting. Yeah, you know, it also helps to kind of have an idea of what the venue is like. If you can, like you did today, if you can get to the venue a little bit early, you can walk the venue, you can look at the sight lines, you can get a sense of what the pit's going to be like. Sometimes the pit's really super tight and you don't have a lot of options. Sometimes the pit is spacious and you really do have options and you don't want to be thinking to yourself, oh man, I should have really brought, brought this other lens with me when it could have just very easily gone in your bag. How about this, Adam? I was down there going in the pit and it's, it's only my shoulder lengths wide right now. And then yeah. the guy at the venue's like, yeah, we're just not even going to have a pit tonight. We'll just put people straight up against the stage. So I was like, okay, I just have to figure out how to deal with it. Um, and that, and I'll, and I will. Right, and and it, it, what it means is that shooting, you know, with your seventy to two hundred, you know, if if modest is like right on the edge of the stage, is going to be you're you're going to be shooting into his nostrils. So you, you know, but you never know. I mean, you never know. That's why you want to have at least one or two options with you if you can. Yeah, yeah. And let me see if we got um, anybody to join us. We got. Timmy, let's see, we'll grab this. And I got to go shortly to go uh, shoot sound check. Um, let's get Timmy on here and see if we can hear him. Timmy, what's up? How's it going, guys? Going, where are you calling from? Uh, actually, I'm calling from uh, Newtown, Pennsylvania, right around the corner from you. Newtown, Pennsylvania. I get... <laughs> what's going on? Crazy. Uh, not much. Uh, I just had a question. What what lens should I look at? I'm looking at going uh, for a higher quality lens. Um, I shoot Canon right now, just a Rebel. And I want to know if I should save up and go for a 70 to 200, or if I should get a 2470 for my first lens uh, for shooting at concerts. If I should, if I'm, if I'm going to be back farther because I can't get pit access, should I go for the 70 to 200 so I can shoot from farther away? Um, or if, if you I can, can if, no. If you can't get pit access, you're not going to be able to take your camera in there. At all? Especially with the bigger, especially with the bigger lenses. 
No, no if okay. you don't have a you know? pass, they're going to see that as as a professional camera, and they're not going to let you in most of the time. Okay. Well, but here, here's the thinking. You could go to Allen's. You know Allen's camera in Levittown, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can go there and see if he's got anything refurbed or used. But really, for your Rebel, I would look at a Sigma 70 to 200, 2.8. Then I would look at a Sigma 17 to 50, 2.8. Buy both of those lenses for under the price that it would cost you to get the 70 to 200 version 2 Canon, which is like $2,400. Because with right. your Rebel, you're not going to see too much of a quality difference between those two lenses. As you start getting into the higher end cameras, like the 5D Mark II, and you get into the, the full frame cameras, you're going to see the differences. But when you're just starting out, if you get a 17 to 50 and a 70 to 200, you're going to cover that whole range, and you'll be able to sell those lenses in a couple of years uh, for, for basically what you paid for them. Go ahead, Adam. Yeah, one other thing to think about. The 17 to 50 is probably going to be the, like 2.8. That's going to be the lens that's going to be on your camera 90% of the time. So if you don't always or often shoot with the 70 to 200, maybe you get the 17 to 50, and you rent the 70 to 200 a couple times to see how you like it and if it actually makes sense for you to buy it. Because if it's not going to be on your camera very much, it's a, it's a pretty big investment. Yeah. Just a thought. Great. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks, Timmy. Yep. Okay. What do we got? Bill, Jack, um, let me see what this looks like. And then I've got to, uh, yeah, here, let's grab them. We'll grab this one. And then um, I hear him uh, testing. I hear him going, hop, hop, choo, choo, hip, test, hip, choo, choo. Testing the mic. What's up, Bill? Not too much. Um, it's Billy Jack. I don't know. It's a classic movie. But anywho. Um, yeah, no, I'm just curious uh, if, like, how often do you guys go through your settings? Do you find that, like, because of the lighting it's going all over the place that you're constantly changing your ISO and all your different stuff? Well, that's a very, very, very good question. Um, I'm shooting most shows in manual first off. So okay. I'm not really making terribly too many changes like, I'm not going to aperture priority. I'm not going to shutter priority. I'm staying in manual. Um, but, yes, you, you are changing your settings quite often depending on the lights. Um, the ISO will stay kind of set unless I lose a lot of light. If the lights go really dark, then I may bump my ISO real quick, drop my shutter speed, open up my lens if I need to. But most of the time, I'm just changing between the shutter speed and the aperture. Um, my goal at a show is to have, like, a 400th of a second uh, shutter speed no matter what because that's going to help me freeze action if that causes me to have to raise my ISO then then I'm, I'm all for that because my camera can handle it uh, but also that gives me the ability to sometimes shoot at like three two or three five which is going to help me with focus but if we see that the lights like some lights are brighter than others you know when you get to the green green isn't very bright um, red can throw out a lot of light orange can be pretty bright but as the light changes it comes down to just dropping the shutter speed or raising the shutter speed. And then if you need more shutter speed, then you start tweaking the ISO. But um, you can, I spend most of my time just tweaking the shutter speed up and down as the lights change. Does that, does that help? Yeah, no, it totally does. Um, I'm just curious, like you may have mentioned it too, but what's your, like your general ISO that you shoot with then? Like what do you uh, find? Like for me, it, it varies. I could it, it it really varies on the venue. Like tonight, if it's a dark venue, I could be at eight thousand ISO just to be there because eight thousand ISO is going to give me the shutter speed that I want, and I still have the quality. But if I was using say a D seven thousand or a D thirty one hundred, I'd top it out at like thirty two hundred at the most. Um, but then I'd be using a slower shutter speed and letting more light in. But generally speaking, if I've got great light, I'm at anywhere from 2,500 to 4,000 because that affords me a better shutter speed. Yeah, no, I just asked because I shoot with the D90 right now and it's, uh, like, if I go above, like, 1,600, I find it gets very grainy. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I'm not knowing what I'm doing with my settings and stuff, but well, anyways, what, no, this what is... Lens? Go ahead. What lens are you using? Uh, right now, it's like, uh, I've been using the... What is it? Sorry, 70 to 300, but it's the cheaper one. It's a 1.4. So, and that's, I, mean, I don't know. I haven't done a lot of concerts. Sorry, go ahead, Jared. 
All right, yeah, well, basically what's going on, it's not your camera that's causing, I mean, yeah, your camera's causing the grain, but what's going on there is that 70 to 300 is a 5.6 out at 300. So now you're yeah. not letting as much light in, and when you're not letting as much light in, you have to bump your ISO up higher. If you shot at 1600 and you had like a 51.8 and you're shooting at, say, 2.8, you, you would get much better images with the proper exposure than if you're shooting with 300 at 5.6. Um, it, it's that's why I push better glass and I know that it's expensive and I know that people give me crap for it all the time but a, a lot of people are like well why am I getting noise in my images and a lot has to do with the amount of light that you're letting in because when you don't have to raise the ISO up and you can just you know open up your lens more and let more light in you're gonna get better quality images yeah no I totally agree with you like uh, that's the mistake that I made when I first got into photography and I got some lenses and I wish I wouldn't have but I mean, the great thing is I think the value kind of stays the same and I'll be able to sell them. So cool. Yeah. No, thank you very much. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, all right. Thank you for being on. Yeah, that, that's a good thing too. Um, don't, it's okay to get the wrong lenses early. I made that mistake early. I had bad lenses when I first started. I had a 100 to 300 5.6 and it was terrible. I didn't know what to do, but it's just, you know, everybody works their way towards better glass. Adam, you had to work your way towards better glass, right? Yeah, I mean, I I kind of started off, you know, with with some with a few decent lenses. But I remember the the biggest misstep I I made very early on many years ago was like one of those seventy to two ten, you know, four or five to five six, uh, very fast yeah. focusing lens, nice weight, nice feel, nice Nikkor glass, but just not fast enough, you know. And I quickly swapped that out for an 8200-2.8, which was fantastic, you know, while I had it. And, I, you know, I, th I think it's, yeah, I think that, it, it, yeah, it's important to have a good, a good. Yeah, I mean. You, you know, the other thing that, that even um, that, that, uh, that he could do is, you know, if, if he's only going to buy one lens, you know, even like an 85-1.8, you know, for, for yeah. shooting, you know, it's, it's pretty affordable. It's lightweight. Um, it's got a really nice amount of telephoto on a uh, D90. Yeah, um, really sharp, you know, and uh, maybe a decent compromise. Yeah, and then that and that's always the case. Good glass doesn't have to be uber expensive. A thirty-five one eight is cheap. A Nikon forty millimeter two point eight is even cheap, and it's a macro lens. Canon's got the fifty one eight. Um, Canon's got an eighty-five one eight. If you can buy these lenses used, or like Adam always says, you can rent whatever you need to use, and a lot of places that you rent at may let you build up. Well, if you rent and then buy, they may just di take take the discount. So, guys, leave a, um, a comment down here. Has this been helpful for concert photography? Have you enjoyed the last hour if you stayed on for the last hour? You know, taking the tour around the venue and talking about lighting and talking to some of the band members and all that. Has it been helpful? Cool. Yeah, and I, I hope to, rec you know, I, I was screen flowing this on my laptop. I just like getting out and about and, and, um, a lot of people have been asking for like more advanced information. That's I like doing more advanced stuff, but I also like to try to keep it so that people can understand it. I know I was throwing out a lot of numbers here, and 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 I do that often, but I think it all will end up making sense <laughs> in the long run. So, Adam, thanks for jumping on. I thought you were going to the movies. Well, I am. Right after. What this. are you going to see? Uh, the uh, Dragon Tattoo. The girl with the dragon tattoo. The girl with the dragon tattoo. Sounds good. Um. Yeah. All right. Enjoy that. Happy holidays, everybody. Whatever you're celebrating, happy holidays. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for joining for the last hour. I'm glad that this has helped you guys out. Um, I want to do a lot more spreecasts. As soon as they give me a mobile app when they create that, I will go live spreecast from wherever I'm going. Maybe they'll buy me an iPad 2 or maybe an iPad 3. Adam, I'm going to ask them for an iPad 3 or something that can make me go mobile. And um, yeah, so that would be cool. Um, yeah, that's about it. Anything you want to add? Because I'm, I'm late for sound. Uh, I got one minute to get the sound check. All right. Well, that's, that, I think that should wrap it up. Good questions. Have a good show. Happy holidays to everybody. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you for that question. That was a great question. Lots of great questions on here. Um, thank you guys very much. Jared Poland Fro knows. Photo.com. See ya.